welcome to capsule number 5 yes, which is the in this capsule we are going to look at some terms related to wings so now we move from aerofoils to wings and today we still look at aerofoils but talk about critical mark number wave drag and swept wings in the next lecture we are going to look at finite wings and uh, i think drag effects so let us have a quick overview of what we have in store today. So there are a series of uh, concepts to be covered mostly to do with the critical mark number and the drag divergence mark number and then we look at some types of wings which are available to try and give us a better control over wave drag. So what is M critical? <laughs> okay. So M critical, there must be something critical because of the name itself. So to see what is M critical, we will watch a short video. What actually happens to the air in the aircraft when approaching the speed of sound? The airflow speeds up as it passes over the wing and reaches the maximum speed at a certain point on the wing. So the Mach number of the air at this point is greater than that of the aircraft as a whole. As the aircraft speed increases, so does the local Mach number at this point on the wing. Eventually, just at this point on the wing, the air reaches the speed of sound, although the aircraft as a whole is still flying slower than sound. The aircraft's Mach number when this happens is called its critical Mach number, usually written M crit. What okay, so this is very clear. Because of the angle of attack or curva curvature or camber, there is going to be acceleration of the fluid flow both above and below the aerofoil. So the local Mach number is going to increase from the free stream Mach number. There will be some free stream Mach number at which sonic conditions are first reached anywhere on the aerofoil. Remember it could be upper surface, it could be lower surface, it could be front, it could be behind. The lowest free stream Mach number at which sonic conditions are first reached anywhere on the aerofoil is called as the critical Mach number. But the question is why is it critical? It is critical because it tells you that from now onwards there is going to be some portion of the aerofoil which will have sonic flow, Mach number more than one locally. Sonic flow is no problem except the fact that it results in a shock wave and across shock wave there are serious problems. Okay. So that Mach number is the critical Mach number. And the pressure coefficient value, so the pressure coefficient where you reach the sonic conditions first is called as the critical pressure coefficient or CP critical. The local V is 1, Mach number 1 and V infinity is critical Mach number. And the place where it hits or where the place where the sonic conditions start and the shock wave is presented that particular place is where we have the most negative the pressure coefficient. Okay. So this free stream Mach number 0.8 is the critical Mach number. And <clears throat> this Mach number we would like it to be as high as possible so that we can fly faster and faster without encountering the problems of sonic flow. Okay. So if there, are, if there are two aerofoils, aerofoil A, aerofoil B and aerofoil A has a higher critical Mach number, it is a better one because it allows you to travel faster without encountering. Now when you have M equal to 1, you get a weak shock wave. Okay. So the actual value of M critical, it varies from wing to wing depending on the wing profile, wing geometry. The main, the two main parameters that affect the critical Mach number of the aerofoil are its camber and thickness. Basically, camber and thickness are the ones that create acceleration at a given at a given angle of attack. If you have a thicker aerofoil, there will be larger acceleration. If you have more camber, there will be higher acceleration. So the thick aerofoil, because it deflects more, 
it is going to have a lower critical Mach number that means at a lower value of m you will have sonic conditions first reached ok. So, with this we come to the concept of something called as a sound barrier ok. So, sound barrier is a barrier, but it can be easily broken. Now, this was one of the very interesting misconceptions in early days of aviation. So, what used to happen is as aircraft began flying faster and faster, earlier the maximum speed was limited by the power available of the power plant. They were using mostly turbo props, piston props. So, they were not able to fly faster than say Mach number 0 0.6, 0 0.5 etcetera. But when we started getting more powerful power plants and eventually the jet engine, the thrust available became much larger. So, aircraft could fly faster. So, they were able to fly Mach 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.92 and then the pilots reported that as soon as you cross a particular value of Mach number below 1, the whole plane starts shaking, there are lots of vibrations and you just cannot fly faster than Mach number 1. So, many people thought that there is some kind of a physical barrier, speed of sound is a barrier which cannot be surmounted, but then some people said hey we have bullets which fly faster than speed of sound and bullets are also flying objects. So, if bullets can fly that means given sufficient force you should be able to fly. So, we knew that we can fly from anecdotal evidence of bullets, but we were just not able to fly. So, for many many years there was this so called sound barrier and then it was finally broken in 1947 when Chuck Yeager flew an aircraft called Bell X1 for the first time at Mach number more than 1. So, yes it can be broken and let us see what it is and why we call it as a barrier. So, let us revisit the pressure coefficient to get an understanding. So, at very low speeds and when I say low speeds I talk about Mach numbers up to approximately 0.3. At these low speeds you can assume C p to be constant ok. So, C p will be equal to some C p called C p naught does not change with Mach number. Now, when you go beyond Mach 0.3 or so and up to around point Mach 7, remember I am not using absolute values, I am saying approximately. During these conditions, the C p starts changing, it starts actually reducing and the formula which is called as the prandtl glauert rule is a very simple formula that correlates the C p at any Mach number with C p at very low Mach numbers and this is because of the compressibility effects. This change in C p occurs because of compressibility effects and actually if you plot the value of C p versus Mach number, you will see that it is almost constant C p 0 and then it starts increasing and there is one Mach number called m critical at which C p is C p critical and it keeps on increasing further. But actually the rate of change or the rate of increase in C p will not be like this, it will actually be little bit more non-linear after little bit after C p critical. Remember you cannot apply this formula in supersonic flow where m infinity is going to be more than 1. In fact, interestingly you just reverse and call it as root of m square minus 1 ok. So, let us see the critical pressure coefficient. So, if it is a thin aerofoil you can fly longer uh, higher Mach numbers in the free stream to achieve critical Mach number, if it is medium it is lesser, if it is thick then it will start increasing. So, therefore, that is a line which will give you the locus of the location of the critical Mach number and this line is a universal curve, it does not depend upon, it does not change with um, whether it is a thick aerofoil or a thin aerofoil in the sense that there is a there is a curve which can be applied to almost any geometry. So, this line is available if you have the geometrical data ok you can get the value. The value of C p will change depending on thin medium and thick and it will increase as per the frontal cloud rule and it will reach the critical value at some particular point. So, you can apply this uniformly ok. So, let us see 
this we will just do little bit of maths to get the value of C p critical. So, we know that the pressure coefficient is defined as the difference of pressure between the local pressure and the free stream pressure non dimensionalized by the free stream dynamic pressure q naught q infinity ok. This is just revisiting last times one. So, now what I do is I do some mathematical jugglery so that I can get p infinity by q infinity outside. So, it is a ratio of p by p infinity minus 1. This is our first equation C p is equal to p infinity by q infinity times ratio of the pressure free local by free stream minus 1. Okay. We also know that dynamic pressure is defined as half rho v square therefore, q infinity will be half rho infinity and v infinity square. Now, since Mach number m is defined as v infinity by a infinity local Mach number therefore, you can reproduce or replace and say that q infinity is equal to half rho infinity m infinity square a infinity square. Now, you just plug it in that equation. So, if you define gamma is the ratio of specific heats. So, the sonic speed is defined as root of gamma rho by q. So, from these three equations at one place you have a infinity square replace it with a gamma rho naught rho infinity by q infinity. So, you can get q infinity as half m infinity square gamma p infinity ok. So, we substitute that in the previous expression. Now, you will explain you will explain this better to yourself when you derive it yourself. I am going to upload the slide. So, you will be able to derive it and then you will be able to get a feel much better. It is just simpler replacement. But now, p by p infinity or p 0 by p infinity is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square power gamma by gamma minus 1 for isentropic flow relation. So, now we have to assume if the flow is isentropic then replace inside now. So, p by p infinity will be what? It will be p by p infinity will be just replace m by m infinity ok. So, therefore, you put it inside the expression take the ratio of p and p infinity and put it inside. Finally, if you define C p equal to C p critical when m infinity equal to 1 ok. So, you can get C p critical as 2 by gamma m infinity square ratio correct where the two conditions m is at the point where you reach critical Mach number and that point m is equal to 1 by definition. So, therefore, you can get an expression. So, this is a neat expression it only contains gamma which is the gas constant unless the gas dissociates and gamma changes from 1.3 to some other number it is valid and that is true in isentropic flow. So, all you need is m infinity. So, now where is the aerofoil in this? Where is the thickness? Where is the camber? Nothing. It is just a function of m infinity. So, you can call it as a universal expression for C p critical ok. Just put the value of m infinity and you will get C p critical. Remember it is only C p critical not m critical just the value of C p. So, the value of pressure coefficient at critical Mach number correct or at the place where sonic conditions are first reach is always the same. It is just a function of m infinity. So, if your critical Mach number is higher, m infinity is higher. So, C p critical is going to be got by this expression. So, f as m infinity becomes m critical as m equal to 1. So, it is a straightforward expression. Now, problem is how do you get m critical? How do you know at what free stream Mach number the flow will accelerate so that sonic conditions are first reached. Because at a velocity higher than m critical there will be larger areas of flow exposed to sonic flow. So, what is the point at which it happens for the first time for that we need a method. 
So, there are two methods which are available. We will discuss both the methods. One is a simple graphical method, the other is using the equation which we just now derived. So, graphical method is actually very elegant and simple. On the y axis, you plot CP critical, on the x axis, you plot Mach number. Okay. So, obtain a plot of CP critical versus Mach number. How do you get this plot? Yes. Exactly. Are you guys sleeping? from the equation that we just derived. What is the equation? I will show you again from this equation. I just now told you that Cp critical is a function purely of m infinity for any aerofoil. So, we have this expression just put the value. So, using this expression you can get the plot, the simple plot. Okay. It is a quadratic plot because there is m infinity square. Okay. No questions? Now, the next is obtain the value of CP naught, that means CP at lower Mach numbers. Now, usually this is given, usually it is available from the aerofoil data, but suppose you do not know, okay. suppose you do not know, then you will have to do a guess. Then you plot CP versus M infinity from the parental glottal rule. So, what you do? You get the CP naught which means you get the value at which you cut the y axis because the CP naught is going to be a function, it will not be the same for all aerofoils. So, CP naught has to be got from either experimental data or from some um, online calculator or some way you have to get CP naught, but how does CP vary with m infinity from CP naught? is by the parental glottal rule. So, you will get one more line like this. Now, at the intersection of this you can get the value of Cp critical because the red line is the locus of Cp critical for all uh, wings or aerofoils which fly at a particular Mach number and the blue line is the locus or the value of variation of Cp with Mach number for a particular aerofoil starting from a value which is the intersection on the y axis, wherever they intersect that is the critical Mach number. This is one way of doing it. There is also a method to do the whole thing mathematically, which means just solve these two equations simultaneously. Okay. So, what you can do? You can say okay, this is a parental glottal rule and you can notice here that Cp naught is going to increase as m infinity increases or as Cp naught increases the m infinity will increase or vice versa. So, at chronic conditions, so you just equate them at m equal to 1 and by equating them you can actually solve and get the expression. So, it is the same thing either you do it graphically or you do it by simultaneous equation. Now, some people have this uh, misconception that it is very easy to get a critical Mach number um, location. Just look at the place where the thickness of the aerofoil is maximum. That will be the place where you will have the maximum acceleration. So, that is the place where the Mach number will be equal to 1. So, as the free stream Mach number increases, sonic conditions will first be reached at the maximum thickness point, correct? So, many people say it is very simple, that is not true. I will show you an example. For example, look at this aerofoil. Okay. This is a simple Naka 0012 symmetric aerofoil, 12 percent thick. So, you notice that the Cp is maximum at x by c equal to 0.11. That means, at 11 percent location of the cord from the leading edge, the Cp is maximum, but thickness is not maximum at 12, 11 percent, the thickness is maximum at 30 percent. So, even though the maximum thickness occurs at 30 percent of the cord, the highest Cp has already been achieved at an upstream location. So, do not have this misconception that the location of the maximum thickness is the location where the sonic conditions are first reached or where the location where the Cp is maximum. So, 
So, it depends on local acceleration. You have already drawn these plots last time in the tutorial. Okay. So, you have to be careful. So, now if you want to know more about why this happens, I would encourage you to go to the main source Anderson, the, which is the basic textbook we are following and it is nicely explained why this happens there. So, that is a self study for you. I do not want to talk about it more here. So, they are not corresponding and this is a very interesting observation. So, to get the value, to get the location where the velocity is maximum, you actually have to look at the complete geometry of the aerofoil and not just the maximum thickness location. Okay, so, critical Mach number is a Mach number at which sonic condition are first reached. Why do we care? That is not what we really care. The designers or the pilots are mostly interested in this particular Mach number which is called as the MDD, the drag divergence Mach number and the name itself tells the whole story. It is a Mach number at which there is a shooting up of drag and that is the reason why people thought there is a sonic barrier. Now, my question to you is, do you think that the drag of an aerofoil will start shooting up at a Mach number where at a critical Mach number or will it be before it or will it be after it? What do you think? At what free stream Mach number will you have excessively higher drag build up before M critical, at M critical, after M critical or none of the above, we have a fourth choice also. What do you think? After, why after? Why not at M critical? Why not at M critical? Because at M critical you have M equal to 1 which results in a weak wave, a weak shock wave. And a weak shock wave will not give you the maximum drag. As the Mach number goes slightly beyond this M critical, you start getting higher drag. Okay. So, the Mach number at which drag shoots up and shoots up means what? Rapidly, it may become 10 times the drag at M critical. That Mach number is the critical Mach number, but that is not the definition. Okay. The definition is the point at which the graph suddenly undergoes a change in the slope and this particular sharp increase occurs not only because of shock waves, but also because of the flow separation that is induced by the shock wave. So, typically this drag divergence mark number will be m 0.02 beyond m critical typically. So, if the critical Mach number is 0.83, it will be approximately 0.85, approximately. It can change slightly also depending on the geometry of the aerofoil, but generally it is 0.02 Mach number, so slightly beyond. So, sonic conditions appear and then very soon you start getting a fantastic increase in the drag. So, that is the problem. As I said, shock wave is one reason, but that is not the only reason. Shock wave is only a generator of problems. It is not the problem in itself. Because of shock wave, very soon you will experience flow separation and that comes because of the adverse pressure gradient. Okay. But there could be a weak shock wave which may not lead to flow separation. So, therefore, it will create additional drag, but not make it so bad that the flow separates. So, across a shock wave we know that the pressure is going to increase and the velocity is going to decrease. 